Hey data fans, Reed here. Today, I'm going to walk you through what is arguably one of the nicest features to come out for workspace and change management in Power BI in a very long time. This feature is the new deployment pipelines in the Power BI service. And with this, you can now much more easily manage development, test, and production workspaces in your Power BI tenant. So let's hop into the Power BI service and get started. So as much as I love the development pipelines, I need to start this conversation by saying that these are available at the moment only for workspaces that are attached to a Power BI premium capacity, hence the little diamond symbol that you see over next to this workspace right here. And you will also only see this option up here at the top in your menu if you have a tenant with premium capacity. So if you don't have any deployment pipelines made yet, you will get this splash landing page here that just says that you can create a pipeline, assign workspaces, develop and test, and then share. So let me go ahead and walk you through what this is. I'm going to create a pipeline. I'm going to call this company pipeline. You can add a description if you need to. Go ahead and create. There we go. And we're now given three different environments, development, test, and production. The nice thing here is if you assign a workspace, you can actually assign it to any one of these three and use any combination thereof. So if you assign a workspace, you will see that you can only assign one workspace at a time. I can choose where I want to assign it to. So whether or not I want to start from the development, the test, or the production environment, I have that flexibility. So come up here, I have two workspaces assigned to a premium capacity, company analytics, and I'm going to go ahead and assign that to the development workspace. Now you don't have to use all three of these, you could just simply do a test and production, or you could do development, test, and production. You have the choices around those. So go ahead and click assign, and you'll see that it put it in here into the development workspace. And if you click show more, you'll see that there's two primary things included in here. We have the data sets. We also have the reports. I actually have two versions of the report in here. I have Google Analytics plus a dev version of the report specifically only for development and nothing else. And we can also see that there's zero dashboards. Now you might notice that there are no data flows in here. Those are not things that are included with this. And you do have access to the workspace settings as far as access and settings. That's the same that if you had gone over here and gone to the workspace setting there, that just gives you a convenient location to this as far as who you want to have access it and other settings as well for the workspace. Now you can publish an app off of this if you wanted to, just like you normally could. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to deploy to test. Now I don't actually want to employ this entire development workspace. I only want to deploy these two data sets and these two reports. This is only really relevant to a development environment. I don't need that to test and I don't need that for production, just for development. So I'm going to click deploy to test. And what this is going to do is it's going to spin up an entirely new workspace for me and copy all four of these over there. You can see that it's going to be called now company analytics test. And what you can see is that deployed a few of my reports and a few of my data sets, but there is a little thing here that shows whether or not it's synced. Now that thing is showing us that there is something in our development that is not in our test. Now before I show that, I just want to confirm this is just a standard workspace that's in here. You'll see that there is a company analytics test that also has the premium capacity assigned to it. So it created this, scripted this, but it also can be configured in here just like you could any other workspace. Now if I click compare, you'll see that it shows all these are aligned and this is not. This is considered new. Now, personally, I'm not quite sure about the syncing in as far as the way that interface is designed. To me, I didn't want to deploy that, and this almost makes it seem like there's an error. So I would potentially consider some other uh, notification in there. And also the fact that I actually did not make any changes yet. That workspace had just some of the objects migrated from development to test. So I'm hoping they maybe update this to change the way it's displayed, but it is at least letting you know there are differences between the two. If I wanted to, I could then add this and deploy it. But again, I do not need this report in my test workspace. And the same thing in here, I have an option to publish the app or deploy to production. Now, a couple of other things that I want to mention in here, the data set was copied. So that can be refreshed separately than these. These are unique entities from each other. They just can have the ability to transfer from one workspace to the other. Now, if you come up here to the lightning bolt icon, there is a couple of things in here that you can do. So you can actually create some data set rules. If you open up Google Analytics and go to parameters, let's go ahead and add a new rule. Now here's one thing that's really nice. So in this case, I have a couple of parameters in here. The one that I want us to focus on is the start date. So with this, you can actually set the date range for say your fact table and for testing, maybe you only need the last 30 days or the last couple of months. So you can assign a value in here that might be a smaller date range. And then you can assign a larger value once it's in production that can reduce the time it takes to refresh 
and it also allows you to pull in just the minimal amount of data needed for some kind of refresh. So in this case, let's say, uh, go ahead and put that at 1119. There we go, a smaller date range, save and close. And now, whenever this gets refreshed, that's going to refresh based on the parameter just in the test workspace. Now, one thing I wanna mention here is because each of these are unique workspaces, any workspace access between these does not get migrated. So my development access for members does not move over when I tested this earlier into the test environment, and that test does not move to production. Now, this might be something that changes in the future. I didn't see any specific mentions of this in the documentation that they currently have on Microsoft.com, but the member access has to be set up individually for each of these environments, just to let you know. So again, I'm just actually going to go ahead and migrate everything. So I don't even have to click on any of these to check them. I just simply say deploy to production. And because I didn't make any selection, it will automatically select all of them. There we go. And because they share the same number of data sets and reports, and I didn't selectively remove anything, they do get more of that green indication to say that they're perfectly in sync. So again, I think this points to the fact that I would like this to be changed as a different symbol and description because no actual changes were made. I just selected to choose to not to bring in one of those items. And the production environment is now a workspace that again is over here. We have the original one, we have test and production. And if we want to, we can actually rename them in here as well. So I can go to workspace settings and I can call this development. There we go, to make sure it's consistent. So we have development, test, and production, and you will see that reflected again in this list over here. And if you wanted to even get rid of the word production, you can change that as well too. And then if you wanted to update that parameter that we had set in test, you can go to production. You can set your own rule here for that. Open that up, go to parameter rules, add a new rule, and then say start date. In this case, let's say I want this to be back to 2010. There we go. And now we've increased the date range for that and we have a smaller one for test and the full data set in this case for production. And just to mention the published app options, typically between test and production, you would wanna potentially set it up where you are actually testing a published app in the test environment. And then you would also have a separate app you could create in the production environment, but it does let you create them between all three. But overall, I love, love this new feature as far as having those unique environments between all three of these or any combination thereof this is a massive step forward for administrators and other tenant management for Power BI without having to do that manual publish yourself. And having the syncs between these is gonna be so much easier going forward. My fingers are crossed this eventually comes to pro, which it probably will, but that's my next hope for this is for all of the customers that do not have premium that they will get a chance to use this someday. Thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Plus, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. So until next time.